Last week, one of you guys left me a comment asking about some VFX in an Aries music video. The effect in question here is where the subject is in a car and they look like they're pretty much stationary, but the background is zipping past them as if they were driving forward in the car. The way that you would typically pull this off and the way that they probably pulled it off here, you would take a second car, drive at the same speed next to the first car with the subject in it, and you would keep the subject centered in the frame with the camera on the second car. That is what gives you that effect where the background looks like it's moving and the subject doesn't. But this is a video editing channel, so I thought I would figure out how to do this in post so that if somebody didn't have all the resources available to get this shot in camera, they would still have an option to pull off this kind of shot. The quality of the shot that you make in post is really going to depend on the shots that you put into it and the amount of time and effort you put into actually making your animations. In order to pull this off inside the editor, we're going to need at least three things. These are the basic building blocks that you're going to need in order to make this effect work. You're going to need some keyable footage of you or your subject, or I guess you could rotoscope it if you're an absolute editing savage, but I'm going to key it. So we'll grab some frames out of this blue screen footage here, boop, just like that. And now that our blue screen footage is on our timeline, we're going to jump into Fusion because everything else we're doing today takes place in there. So we have our media in number one, which I'm going to select and press F2, rename this B screen so I can keep track of that. And then the second thing we're going to need is a panoramic or a video of something going past you. So the panoramic, we're going to move behind a couple of our other layers to give the illusion of motion, but you'll be able to capture motion better if you actually go out, film out your window of your car or something like that. So we'll press F2 again and we'll name this one Pano. And then we'll drag in our last building block here, our car. So we'll F2 and name this one car just for the sake of organization. So blue screen, what are we gonna do here? Well, first things first is we're gonna do some color grading because this looks pretty green. And if there's a color cast over the whole image, it tends, at least in my experience, to make color grading a little bit harder. So we're gonna drag our master just ever so slightly into the magenta region of this color wheel on our color corrector node. And now our whites are looking pretty white. So our next step is gonna be a delta key and if you want to pull this menu up and you're not sure how, it's just shift and spacebar at the same time. So now that our delta keyer is in our node web here, we're going to go ahead and select the color that we're keying out. In this case, obviously, we're going to go with blue. And it looks like we're not catching all of it, so I'm going to reduce this amount just to get that cleaned up a bit. And that actually looks really good, and it doesn't appear to be messing with me at all. So once you're happy with that color being keyed out, we're going to go ahead and make what's called a garbage mat. So we're going to deselect everything by double clicking in here, and then we're going to grab a spline mask. And with our spline mask, we're going to draw around everything that's not included in that key that we still don't want to be in our final image. So we'll just do a rough mask around there, go down there, and grab that. And now that we've made our spline that's not connected to anything, remember, we're going to hold right click on its output, and we're going to move that over to our delta keyer, and then let go of right click. Once you've done that, you're going to get this little menu, and each of these are one of these inputs, and we're just going to choose garbage mat. And now I'm gone. But not to worry, it's still working how it's supposed to. We're just going to click on this invert box with our B spline selected. And now we have me just hanging out by myself with nothing else in the frame. The next thing we're going to do here is add a merge node and we're going to get our car into this. We're going to go through a similar masking process here where we're going to take our car and we're just going to go ahead and merge that right into this merge node. And right off the bat here, it looks a little bit too small. So we're going to go ahead and add a transform node into this node web as well and then we're going to make this bigger this is going to allow us to make this mask a lot more easily so now we're going to grab our car node again and we're going to make another spline mask and we're going to invert it so that it pulls that back up and then we're just going to draw our mask around our car and obviously if you're using a 3d model you probably won't need to do any masking or anything like that especially for your vehicle because you'll be able to just keep it as part of the scene and if you need to know how to import some uh, 3d models i have another video about that that i'll link in the description down below and we're going to uninvert that so now it looks like this so with our first car mask selected we're going to make another one and instead of spline for our our window we have a lot more hard angles so I'm going to be going with our polygon mask tool instead so I'm going to click in all of these corners 
just to make our little window there. And then we're gonna change our paint mode, now that we've done that, to subtract. And you'll see that now we can see right through that window. Now that our car is masked out and a little bit better of a size, we're gonna go ahead and add a transform node to our subject as well. And then we're gonna shrink that down a bit so that it will fit inside of our car. Both of these are gonna get bigger soon, but I want them to fit together before we get to that step. So I'm gonna put me in the car in a way that kind of looks like I might be sitting in there. At this point, if you wanted, you would add some color correction to make these two things match. But for this, for these purposes, I don't think we're too far off on our colors here. So these both go into the same merge node. So if we wanna move this around as a big group, we'll take this merge and add a transform to the end of that. So now we can take everything in that merge and adjust its position and its size with just one transform node. That's gonna be really handy coming up here. We still have one building block left to go and that's gonna be the background. So we'll take our pano node and we'll move it over toward media out just so we can keep this a little bit organized, drag media out over a little bit and then we'll add another merge node after our transform but before media out and that is where our pano is going to live. Now, immediately, it's gonna cut off everything we had going on, but that's because this line going from pano to merge two is green, which indicates that it's the foreground layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on merge two, hit control T, and that will flip our foreground and background layers so that our initial composite here is on top and our background is the background, exactly how we want. Now is when things get a little bit funky. We're gonna make ourselves some more space here by moving those over, and we're gonna sever both of these connections. Now we're gonna start working in 3D space. And don't click off because it's not as scary as it sounds. I'm gonna walk you through step by step. Click on our panorama or our background node, and then we're gonna come over here to this little hotbar, and we're gonna click on add image plane right here. Now we have our pano going into an image plane, and then we're gonna run that image plane into a merge 3D, and then we're gonna make an image plane for our initial composite as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that, and then I'm gonna run this into our Merge 3D as well. And again, for our initial composite, you want that green line in order to indicate that it's going to be the foreground. Now that both of these are in a Merge 3D, we're gonna run this Merge 3D into a Renderer 3D. And what that's gonna do is actually allow Resolve to show you what's going on. Because if you don't have the renderer in your node web, you won't be able to see anything you're doing. So you definitely need to run through that renderer in order to actually do this project at all. And now, is actually the fun part. We're gonna add in a 3D camera. So we'll click on our Merge 3D that we made and then we'll go ahead and come up to this same hotbar and we'll click Camera 3D. That's gonna go into that pink line input right there and that is gonna allow us to do some really cool stuff here. Our next step is to click on our image plane that we made for our background image and we're gonna press one on our keyboard and that's gonna show us our image plane in the 3D space. If you wanna know about how to move around in 3D space, I have a video linked in the description down below that will show you pretty much everything that you need to know about working in 3D inside of Resolve, at least to get started. But once we have our image plane in our first viewer here, we're gonna go ahead and click on camera 3D, but we're not gonna press one or two. We're just gonna click it so it's selected. And then it will be shown as a wireframe, which will expose the fact that we're actually poking all the way through this, so we need to move our camera back in order to be able to see it better. So now we can see that there's a ton of clipping between our two images. And the way that we're gonna fix that is by moving their individual image planes. So if we click on one of their image planes, come over to our inspector controls over here, and we click on transform, we can actually move these apart. And if these are not precise enough or you just don't like them, you can go ahead and add your image plane for whichever one you wanna move into your viewer number one. Go ahead and adjust your Z axis so they stop fighting with each other because they're not on the same plane anymore. And so now if we go back into our camera with our background still in viewer number one, we're gonna zoom this in until our background fills up our viewer number two, just like that. And then we're gonna move it all the way to one side. And it's gonna become obvious pretty quick here that the longer you want your actual clip here to be, the longer you're gonna need this panoramic to be physically, or the longer you're actually gonna need your video to be shot for. So now that everything is right here, we're gonna grab our transform and we're actually gonna reduce the size of our car and we're gonna move it around. So if we are paying attention, our camera is all the way on this right side here of our panoramic. So now what we're doing is actually putting our car in front of our camera. 
we'll move our camera a little bit closer because obviously this car's wheels aren't going to spin and that's going to be a tell so if we can get those out of the shot that would be ideal in this case we'll just do something like that and then i'm actually going to take our background image and move that up a touch so that it looks like I'm sitting closer to the ground. And now all it is is basic keyframing. Now, in order to get our effect of motion, we're gonna go into our background image plane right here. We're gonna go to the first frame of our clip and then we're gonna keyframe our X translation parameter. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and skip right to the very end of your clip. And then we're gonna move that background image plane to the right until it gets where we want it to go, where we want our clip to end. So we'll just go all the way over like that. And now if we hit play on this, our background moves and our subject says where he's at. And if you want this to look realistic, you're definitely gonna need to do some very detailed color matching on all three of these parts so that they look like they were shot at the same time at the same place. This is kind of one of those effects that's going to be exactly the sum of its parts. So the better you can do on all the bits, the better the final project is gonna look and you're definitely gonna wanna add motion blur to this one. And in order to do that, we're gonna click on our renderer 3D, we're gonna go to settings, and once you're here, you're gonna click on this motion blur checkbox. Now pay attention to our viewer right here where we can see everything because it's about to look a lot more like this car is moving than it did before. So we'll click on motion blur and it blurs the correct way because that's how our background is moving. So if we hit play on this, we'll see that our car appears to be moving because the background moving against it, but we'd be able to add a lot more realism if we added some jitters maybe to the car or a little bit of camera shake into the camera. There are a lot of little tweaks that you can do to make this look perfect, but this is the gist of how to actually get this effect done if you don't have access to two cars and a camera and possibly a road that you had to rent all kinds of different things to get a shot like this safely. So if you're looking to get this effect but you can't get it outside practically, this is the best way that I've found to do it in post inside of Resolve. So hopefully this cleared that up for you and to reiterate, this is an effect better done in camera than in post. I really hope that you guys enjoyed brushing up on your fusion skills today. If you have any questions left after watching the video or if you want to request a video for the future or you just want to say hi, go ahead and do any of that stuff in the comments down below because I'd love to talk to you guys. This was how to create Aries in camera car effect in post. And until next Thursday, my name is Garrett Harding and I'll see you next time.